Hello, viewers. Welcome to Lessons with Philip. And today, our topic will be on sum of GP. And we have a particular question on the board. Okay? Now, we can be asked to sum all the terms in a GP. How can we go by that? For example, if we are given a time, we are given a GP, let's say we're given 32, let's say we have 64, 32, 16, 8, and so on and so forth. Let's say, that, let's say the GP stop at this point. If it has to hard all the times in this GP, is it that you take your calculator and now be calculating 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8? If the sequence is so long, will you be adding one by one? Capital no. There's a formula to use to hard all the terms in a GP. And that's what we want to deal with. Okay. Don't forget in our, in our previous classes, I have told us that some sequences as a terminal term, where some sequences is infinity. That shows that we can have the way we have 32, we have 16, we have 8. It can keep going like that till infinity, except something stop it. Okay. Now, if a sequence go like this, that shows it keep continuing. Okay. Now, if you have that, this kind of sequence, it has a particular formula to use to hard those sum. If you have a terminal sequence, there's a formula to use to add all the terms in the GP. Okay, let's go. Now, sum of a GP is given to be first term multiplied by r raised to power n minus 1 or divide by r minus 1. Okay? And sometimes we can use, we can change the formula to be first term multiplied by 1 minus r raised to power n or divide by 1 minus r. Basically, we use, it is much convenient to use this when your radio, when your common ratio is less than, is less than 1. Is less than one. And you use this one, it's much convenient to use this particular formula, the first one, when your common ratio is greater than one. Okay? Okay? Like for example, if my common ratio is half, for example, if my half is equal to half, one over two, it, is, it will be much convenient for me to use this second formula. All right? Now, it is not compulsory. If you use this one, when your common ratio is still greater than one, if you use this, you still get your form, you still get your answer, which may be a little bit tedious or difficult for you to manage the signs, especially the negative signs, okay? Now, it's just for convenience that you use the first one for your common ratio greater than one and the second one for your common ratio greater less than one, okay? Now, to sum, to add, a GP that has an infinite, infinite terms, that, that shows that the terms continues, like what I've explained. Now, this, the, the sum of that, of that GP is given to be A divided by 1 minus R. Take note, please. This is how we had the common, we had the terms in a GP. This is for the, the GP that has the terms to be infinite okay now let's go to the examples let's go to the examples okay r greater than one this one for r less than one and this is for infinite terms when the terms are more than one um, uh, does not end when the terms does not end you use this okay now for the example we have it is not an infinite sequence because we are told that the GP has eight terms. That shows we can count the number of terms in the GP. That shows that we can only use either of the first or the second. Okay? Now, we are told that the GP has eight terms. That shows, given, that shows from my question, my n is equals to what? Eight. Okay? A GP has eight terms. Its first and the last term is 0 0.3 and 38.4. That shows that my first term, I'm giving my first term to be what? 0 0.3. And my last term, my last term, which is my eighth term, is equivalent to 
38.4. Now I'm asked to calculate the, the common ratio, and second, I'm asked to calculate the sum of the GP. Okay, now let me start with the first one. Don't forget that I'm asked to find the common ratio. To find the common ratio, you must know the hand term of your, of your GP. And the hand term of my GP says, the hand term of my GP says, first term multiplied by common ratio raised to power n minus 1. Okay? Now, I have known my eighth term. That's just my eighth term, which is now equivalent to 38.4. It's now equivalent to my first term. What is my first term? 0 0.3 multiplied by my common ratio is what I'm asked to find. And my n is what? My n is 8. That is 8 minus 1. Automatically, my 38.4 will now be equivalent to 0 0.3 multiplied by r raised to power 7. Okay? Now, what I need to do is divide through. If I divide through, if I divide through the equation, by 0 0.3, I have 38.4 divided by 0 0.3, which is the same thing as 0 0.3 multiplied by r raised to power 7 divided by 0 0.3. So automatically, this my 0 0.3 will go away. So 38.4 divided by 0 0.3 should give me 1. Let me check that. 38.4 divided by 0 0.3 will give me 128, which is now equivalent to what am I left at this side? I'm left with r raised to power 7. Okay? Now, this 28 is the same thing as 2 raised to power 7. 2 raised to power 7 is the same thing as r raised to power 7. 2 in 7 places will give me 128. Automatically, if I equate... If I equate these indices, if I equate these indices, my R will now be equals to 7. Okay? Because the power is the same, automatically my R will be equivalent to, my R will be equivalent to 2, rather. My R will be equivalent to 2. Now, I've gotten my common ratio to be 2, which is the first thing. Now, the second thing, is for me to get the sum, I'm asked to find the sum of the terms of the GP. So the sum of a GP is equivalent to first term multiplied by R raised to power N minus 1 divided by R minus 1. I'm using this because my common ratio is greater than 1. Okay? That's why I'm using the first one. So the sum of my eight terms it's not equivalent to what is my first term? My first term is 0 0.3. So I have 0 0.3 multiplied by what is my half? My half is 2. That is 2. What is my n? My n is 8. Okay? Minus 1 or divided by 2 minus 1. So sum of the 8 terms, sum of the 8 terms in that sequence is not equivalent to 0 0.2 into bracket 2 raised to power 8 should be 250. Let me check. 2 raised to power 8 should be 256. 256 minus 1 divided by 1. Automatically, sum of my 8 terms, sorry, 0 0.3 rather. What is happening? 0 0.3. Now, 0 0.3 multiplied by 256 minus 1 will give me 255. So, that shows that my sum of my eight terms is equivalent to 255 multiplied by 0 0.3 will give me 76.5. So the sum of the eight terms of the GP is equivalent to 76. It's equivalent to 76.5. And this is how to calculate the sum of a of a GP, okay? Now, if you have found this class very helpful, kindly like my videos, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Bye.